Hey, welcome everyone. I'm Bruce Schwartz. Night vision, blue filters, green filters, close-ups, x-ray, and we will see the topography of Copernicus. This is what we're looking at right now. We'll see Eratosthenes Crater. We're going to take a good close look at Kepler Crater and its dimensions and diameter. Aristarchus just over top. Thanks and welcome everyone. We've just saw Mare Crisium to the top right now. This is Mare Fecunditatis. We can see it, all the structuring, and there is a lot of structuring in Mare Fecunditatis. Uh, long paths, and of course, you know, some of you, a lot of, a lot of you are noticing how the connections, how the supposed ejecta arrives perfectly aligned with other craters, and I mean perfectly aligned. And again, I say, I don't know how often, how can ejecta run for thousands of kilometers or hundreds of miles, whatever. Imagine, imagine that, you know, we don't have to look that much in depth to see that there's something constructed on the moon. That's the worst of it. 93 kilometers, Copernicus, that's its diameter and its depth. See as we're coming up here, the black area, which is usually white, of course, this is x-ray, is 3.8 kilometers in depth. Look at this object. Structuring, definitely structuring, 
not far from um, Copernicus. And look at the surrounding topography. Look at it all, whether it be something that's damaged, something that was just built, or something that's continually being built. That's what we'll be taking note of. Look here in Mare Fecunditatis. This is amazing. What we can see here, both uh, in an area of at least 300 to 400 kilometers, we could see all these objects that could be machinery, that could be anything, ancient or new, recent or old, who knows? That's besides the point. The point is that there are possible um, objects that were constructed or that look constructed on the lunar surface. We're not making it up. I'm not making it up. I'm showing you the proof here.
So I hope you appreciated it this way of seeing the surface. A lot more detail, and of course, for research reasons, it is a lot better and clearer to be able to see the surface. But listen, you can't clarify smoke and you can't clarify a haze, leaving not ever ruling that out. This is what we should always take into consideration, a possible haze. I got a big scope, guys, and it's still blurry sometimes.